Space lovers have been waiting on the edge of their seats since the James Webb Space Telescope launched last year. Once the upgraded telescope reached its final destination, the wait became even more difficult. Now, months after the first adjustments to the instruments began, NASA is finally gearing up to show off the first James Webb images. To really amp up the hype, the space agency shared a list of targets used during these first observations. So, what are these first targets? Let's find out. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about the list of targets for Webb's first space images. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. NASA has created a hype around the globe by sharing a list of targets citing five different celestial objects that they used James Webb to observe. The cosmic objects are officially the first targets for the latest telescope that NASA launched, and the release of these first James Webb images will mark the beginning of the telescope's scientific operations. As such, finding some good targets was no doubt a priority for the James Webb team. NASA says that the targets were all chosen by an international committee of representatives from NASA, ESA, CSA, and the Space Telescope Science Institute. It didn't say what made these objects special enough to observe, but they should help showcase the amount of detail James Webb is capable of capturing. So let's talk about these targets one by one and find out what's so special about them. First up on the list of objects targeted for the first James Webb images is the Carina Nebula. One of the largest and brightest nebulae in the sky, the Carina Nebula is located 7,600 light years away from Earth. It's home to many massive stars, NASA says, and is several times larger than our Sun. Nebulae are stellar nurseries where stars are birthed and this particular one is home to many gigantic stars, including some larger than the Sun. While it is very bright and large, the Carina Nebula is still not that well known because of its location, which can make it hard to locate in the night sky. In addition, the Carina Nebula's predominant gas is hydrogen. Helium, oxygen, and sulfur have also been detected, which tells astronomers that the Carina Nebula itself was formed in part by ancient stars in the end stages of life, as well as newer activity of developing stars whose radiation emissions are responsible for many of the oddly shaped structures observed today. Therefore, due to the level of dust and gaseous matter within the Carina Nebula, it is highly likely the nebula will give birth to even more new stars in the centuries to come. As we know that Carina Nebula is massive, astronomers will study it in sections, which will be pieced together from smaller photos into composites that can then be dissected and catalogued. WASP-96b for quite some time, astronomers have suspected that hot gas giants outside of our solar system are rich in sodium, the seventh most common element in the universe. However, this elusive element has mostly gone undetected in previous exoplanetary studies because its signatures are too weak to penetrate through cloudy atmospheres. But now, an international team of astronomers has squashed speculation and detected the first strong sodium fingerprint radiating from a hot Saturn, which suggests the planet has a clear, cloud-free atmosphere. The researchers uncovered distinct sodium signatures in the atmosphere of WASP-96b. The researchers uncovered distinct sodium signatures in the atmosphere of WASP-96b, an exoplanet located nearly 1,000 light years from Earth. WASP-96b is about 20% larger than Jupiter and has roughly the same mass as Saturn. But since it's much closer to its host star than Saturn is to the Sun, its sweltering temperature drops it into the hot Saturn category. Southern Ring Nebula Moving to our third cosmic object, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has cast the Southern Ring Nebula in an entirely new light. By observing the nebula in mid-infrared wavelengths, Webb has unveiled the second dusty star at the center of the nebula in far more detail. The star closely orbits its companion as it periodically ejects layers of gas and dust. Together, the swirling duo have created a fantastic landscape of asymmetrical shells. In addition, Webb's near-infrared light image hones in on spotlights from the stars, where the light travels through holes in the nebula's dusty ejections. 
Since planetary nebulae exist for tens of thousands of years, observing the nebula is like watching a movie in exceptionally slow motion. Each shell the star puffed off gives researchers the ability to precisely measure the gas and dust that are present within it. Furthermore, the dimmer star at the center of this scene has been sending out rings of gas and dust for thousands of years in all directions, and NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has revealed for the first time that this star is cloaked in dust. Stefan's Quintet Stefan's Quintet is roughly 290 million light years away. Located within the constellation Pegasus, and it is a visual grouping of five galaxies. Today, the International Webb Telescope reveals Stefan's Quintet in a new light. This enormous mosaic is Webb's largest image to date, covering about one-fifth of the Moon's diameter. It contains over 150 million pixels and is constructed from almost 1,000 separate image files. The information from Webb provides new insights into how galactic interactions may have driven galaxy evolution in the early universe. In addition, with its powerful infrared vision and extremely high spatial resolution, Webb shows never-before-seen details in this galaxy group. Combined with the most detailed infrared image ever of Stefan's Quintet from MIRI and the near-infrared camera, NearCam, the data from Webb will provide a bounty of valuable new information. For example, it will help scientists understand the rate at which supermassive black holes feed and grow. Webb also sees star-forming regions much more directly, and it is able to examine emissions from the dust a level of detail impossible to obtain until now. SMAX 0723 Of course, we can't forget SMAX 0723 either. As the final target for the first James Webb images, SMAX 0723 is an interesting choice. The NASA ESA CSA James Webb Space Telescope has produced the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe to date. Known as Webb's first deep field, this image of galaxy cluster SMAX 0723 is overflowing with detail. Thousands of galaxies, including the faintest objects ever observed in the infrared, have appeared in Webb's view for the first time. This slice of the vast universe is approximately the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length by someone on the ground. The image shows the galaxy cluster SMAX 0723 as it appeared 4.6 billion years ago. The combined mass of this galaxy cluster acts as a gravitational lens, magnifying much more distant galaxies behind it. Webb's NearCam has brought those distant galaxies into sharp focus. They have tiny, faint structures that have never been seen before, including star clusters and diffuse features. Researchers will soon begin to learn more about the galaxy's masses, ages, histories, and compositions, as Webb seeks the earliest galaxies in the universe. All these targets observed by James Webb mark a new era of space exploration, which has never been done before. And if James Webb continues to perform like this, it will unravel much more about the universe that has been hidden from our eyes all along. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.